He's a busy man and was kind enough to give us a couple minutes here today on this busy Friday. He is uh, one of the best in the business, and I'm not just saying that because I work with him all the time on the NFL Media Group. Ian Rappaport at Rap Sheet here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Ian? I'm good. How are you guys? I am doing well. So, J.J. Watt, uh, is this possible that we're going to see him week uh, week 19, right? Uh, maybe a, a yeah. playoff game in Dallas or, or a home playoff game should uh, things break their way? In two yeah, weeks? full transparency. Uh, you were expected to hear about this on Sunday morning, on game day morning for the first time, and then the Cardinals decided to designate him for a turn today, which was very much appreciated. <laughs> Not really. Um, but anyway, yes. Uh, so, J.J. Watt, who tore his labrum and his rotator cuff and his bicep. Oh, my God. Is, is a miracle. Uh, I mean, he, from what I understand, he has been pushing his rehab insanely hard. So he knows his body better than anyone, and he has been pushing to the absolute brink. And because of that, he has been able to um, rehab faster than anyone imagined. So instead of several months, instead of four months or six months, it is going to be a matter of weeks. The plan as of now Mm -hmm. is for him to be out on the field for the first week of the playoffs rather than the Super Bowl, which is what he was originally planning. Oh, my goodness gracious. So that's... That's what a what a major boon that would be. What about DeAndre Hopkins? What about getting everybody back, the whole band back together, you know, to go on the mission here? What do you think? With Hopkins, it doesn't seem nearly as positive. He had a MCL tear, and the knee was really unstable. Um, so you know, possible, but I would say unlikely. When I talk to people close to Hopkins, you know, that sounds like. Some people are like, yeah, we could get him back. I mean, some people close to Hopkins, it's like, oh, man, that was a really serious injury. So I don't get as good a feeling on Hopkins, maybe for the Super Bowl, maybe. Mm. But I, it doesn't seem very likely from what I can tell. Ian Rappaport here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's move to Tampa. Um, what about their injuries and their bumps and bruises and even worse than that can they get everybody who's not done for the season back in time you think for a playoff game next weekend what do you think what do you i mean? don't i don't know about everybody because ronald jones ankle seems to be far more serious than people realize uh he isn't even running yet so the thought of him being back next week i don't know if that's going to happen but it does seem like leonard fournette's going to be back it seems like mike evans is going to be fine Um, Chris Godwin is out. And then Levante David, that was a foot sprain. So that's like kind of tricky. So I think he has a chance to get back, but you know, obviously looking at the way it happened last year, like this is very, very different, right? I mean, last year they were rolling. I think if, you know, if you took a poll last year and you said, which of the, you know, not top rated teams presents the biggest danger, like some people would have taken the bucks just because they kind of were like, you know, rolling in on, on a high horse for the playoffs, it's not like that this year. Um, you know, they, they have Tom Brady. I don't know if you heard that. They have Tom Brady, so yes, they sir. could still get it together. Um, but A.B., you know, as crazy as, as everything turned out, like, he's a very good football player, and using him really does hurt. So now that dust has settled, and and uh, I guess now the, the teams are like, okay, you're going to put everything on your Instagram and your Twitter. We'll, we'll start talking as well. So what happened in the last week, you know, soup to nuts? Or the last couple weeks, soup to nuts okay, so with him. Let's go back to last Wednesday. Okay. So, which is uh, nine days ago, not this past Wednesday. Yep. So he asked the Bucks to guarantee one million dollars of his incentives. He was going to get it anyway, but he wanted it guaranteed. Maybe because his foot wasn't feeling. But anyway, he wanted it guaranteed. They said we're not going to do that because um, <clears throat> they they just they don't do that, right? So he was upset and then didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. And they didn't think on – sorry, didn't practice Thursday, Friday. They didn't think on Friday that he was going to be able to go. But Saturday he looks good at the walkthrough, shoots up his ankle for Sunday, and then comes in the locker room after getting targeted four times in the first half and throws a fit and says he doesn't want to play on the sidelines when, B, when B.A. and other coaches are targeting him. They eject him from the sidelines, you know, like kind of like an umpire, just tossing a guy. And essentially, he was cut there. And then they tried to get him some help counseling and others, which is why they hadn't cut him previously. 
And then finally yesterday, after he decided to post some very nice text messages from everyone, uh, which I think maybe he thought they were mean, but they actually were very nice, uh, then they decided to cut him yesterday. Hmm. And so uh, it was about money? Is that what this is about? Is, you know, because again, because Arians, Arians did clearly know about his ankle, right? I mean, he, he sent a photograph of his ankle. And so... Well, I mean, he, he also missed practice Thursday, Friday. Right. So everyone knew then. And like, they've been... You know, they, I know they were frustrated with his rehab and how attentive he was before this. So they knew about his ankle. And no, no, I, I know that. But the reason why maybe he said, I don't know if it was his ankle or not, you know, is because they might have, that might have been, well, if he was not playing because of his money and he's upset that he right. wasn't playing because of his money, that might have been a reason for it as well. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, and I'm not sitting here right. trying to I cover mean, for anybody because clearly this relationship, despite them keeping him, uh, was sour. No question, oh, right? And, and now it's not cover, though, because, you know, everything deserves an explanation. And so, like, the ankle thing only makes sense in the context of, like, it was the last straw. Because clearly he, you know, like he can say what he wants about them pushing him to play. You read those text messages, it doesn't seem like they're pushing him to play. Clearly, he wanted to play. He's the one who shot up his ankle, and he wanted to reach his incentives. But, you know, I would say it always is money. Whenever, it's, whenever there's a question, the answer is usually money. And with Antonio Brown, for most of his disputes, money has been at the root of it, and it seems like at least money plays a big part in it here as well. Well, and what about all the things that he was alleging through his lawyer? I mean, where, where does that stand? Are there grievances? Are there, is there, what, what do you know about all of that to well, finish up the divorce? Well, I thought about that a lot. And I don't know what the grievances would be because it's not like there's, you know, it's like, is he going to do a grievance for $60,000? Like, I, you know, because that's what it would be, one week salary, but he's going to get it anyway because he was on the roster Wednesday. So, like, I don't even know, and he can't grieve, you know, about incentives because it doesn't work like that. So, like, I don't know that he could claim to get any money anyway. So I don't even think it's about that. Ian Rappaport uh, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, in whatever time I have left with you, let's just hit on on coaching vacancies um, because okay. I'm sure that's what's burning your phone up for sure. Monday's the day that we'll find out, or Sunday night's the day night that we'll find out. How do you see it all shaking out, Ian, in the NFL? Um, so, to me, the three to watch, and this is not like a total surprise, it seems pretty clear this year, is, you know, Denver, Minnesota, and Chicago. And, you know, obviously Jaguars and Raiders is open. Bill O'Brien is going to interview with the Jaguars, uh, which everyone seems to think is funny. I don't know why that's funny. Like, he was a very, very good coach before he decided to try his hand at personnel. Um, <laughs> but whatever. Um and so, you know, I would say, you know, Nagy is, as we've talked about on, on Game Day Morning, Nagy is likely gone. Uh, and then I would say Fangio and Zimmer are pretty up in the air. Um, you know, both are in doubt. Uh, I think both will have to make cases to stay, but it doesn't sound like a firm decision has been made. But we could have just five openings this year, um, which, you know, would be a little on the low side, but it doesn't seem like there's a can't-miss candidate, so that makes sense as well. What's your reporting on my college coach? And Harbaugh, what do you got for that, for me on that? You know, I, I I would say, to me, it seems like he's in a similar situation as last year, where, you know, is he interested in looking looking at the greener grass in the NFL? I think he's probably would look. Um, it seems to me, and I don't mean this in any way toward anything that was reported, but when someone takes a pay cut, and then gets to shove it where the sun would no longer like to shine. <laughs> usually, it's like we just said, usually it's about money, right? So, yes, he said all the very nice things about a pay cut, but is he using the leverage of the media to say, hey, I'd like a lot more money or I'll go to the NFL? Yeah. I'm not saying that's what's behind it, but I'm just saying, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And is the Jaguars' job uh, more difficult to fill because they, they're keeping their general manager? Is that uh, also part of what you're sensing or hearing, despite Trevor Lawrence's um, remarkable talent? Are you hearing that? You know, I, I think it's maybe not for everyone, 
Um, like for those who need a perfect situation, like Josh McDaniels, like that might not be the great place for him. Mm-hmm. But it, it, that doesn't mean it's specific to Trent Baalke. Some people just would want a clean slate. So, you know, I th- based on the list of people they've targeted, I don't know that there's any right now that would not take it if Trent Baalke is there. Ian Rappaport, thanks for the time. I know you're jammed, brother. Really appreciate the ten minutes. See, you said ten Always. minutes. I gave you. You gave me ten minutes, and I'm. I'm not. I'm not one of those guys that's just gonna hold you. Although well, this is kind of a Jewish goodbye right now, but you know. Um, <laughs> that's why. Uh, thank that's you. Why you're a Jewish goodbye? That's what it feels like right now. I'm, I just don't want to let you go. You know, like how's everything? Like when, you know, I see, like, when I see goodbye to my mom. She's like, okay, anyway, and let me just tell you this other six stories. I'm like, thanks, mom. Goodbye. <laughs> thanks for the call, Ian. Appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.